Hello everyone, this is Janet from Servant for His Glory 44, and I wanted to come on here and share some encouragement that the Lord was pouring out to me as I was just sitting and spending time with Him doing my devotions. And um, you know, He's so faithful to be able to share encouragement after sometimes speaking hard things. You know, the word that He had put on my heart earlier was difficult and so he's just so faithful to be able to share encouragement and so I hope these things will be an encouragement to you as well and so I'm just gonna um, share some things that and the Holy Spirit was pointing out to me and so I really love this out of this devotional book that I have and it's a beer, Jacob, the mighty one of Jacob, and it says, But his bow remained steady, his strong arm stayed limber because of the hand of the mighty one of Jacob, because of the shepherd, the rock of Israel. And I just thought that passage is just so beautiful. And then some of the, I always love these verses that it shares, they usually always speak to me in this book. Um, but it is Psalms 132, too. But I thought the whole chapter was so on point for the hour in which we live. And it says, A habitation for the Lord. Lord, remember David and his afflictions, how he sware unto the Lord and vowed unto the mighty God of Jacob. Surely I will not come into thy tabernacle of my house, nor go up into my bed. And I will not give sleep to mine eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find out a place for the Lord, a habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. Lo, we heard of it at Ephratah. We found it in the fields of the wood. We will go into his tabernacles. We will worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into thy rest, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let the priest be clothed with righteousness and let thy saints shout for joy. For thy servant David's sake, turn not away the face of thine anointed. The Lord has sworn in truth unto David, he will not turn from it. Of the fruit of, the bo of thy body will I sit upon thy throne. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon the throne forevermore. For the Lord hath chosen Zion, he hath desired it for his habitation. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her priests with salvation, and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. There will I make the horn of David to bud. I have ordained a lamp for mine anointed. His enemies will I clothe with shame. But upon himself shall his crown flourish. So I don't know about you, but this just really is speaking to my spirit. It's so prophetic. And I love, I just love the word of God, how it's so alive. And then the other one, I'm going to pause it real quick. The other verses are found in Isaiah chapter 29. And uh, verses, I really liked verses 22 through 24. It says, Therefore thus saith the Lord, who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob. Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. But when he seeth his children, the work of my hands in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob and shall fear the God of Israel. They also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding, and they that murmured shall learn doctrine. So all of this was really speaking to me. And then I want to also share this devotion really quick. Okay, so this says September 19th, but sometimes I'll read ahead if, it, if it, the Holy Spirit points it out. And it said, Psalms 3520, those who live quietly in the land... And I just thought this was so good as we get ready for the feast times to just really press into the secret place. So I just want to share this with you. It says, We are to enter into God's chamber and hide there and be still. Then God will call us those who live quietly in the land. Have this stamp upon you. 
Be quiet outside, you will then be quiet inside. Be quiet in spirit, be aware of soul activities. The dross must be burned out to have the mountain vision. We must get back to God only and cease to see the human instruments. Hide deeper in God, he must be real more and more real. Hide with Christ in God at the throne, be at the springs of things. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, Isaiah thirty fifteen, And that's a verse that, you know, I've loved uh, for a long time. And then it says, yourself, to move everything through God, Yah, not man, go directly to him. Every step with Yah in quietness and in confidence gives you an absolute victory over everything. Keep in step with Yah. Get quiet, beloved soul. Tell out thy sorrow and complaint to Yah. Let not the greatest pressure of business divert thee from Yah. When men rage about thee, go and tell Jesus. Hide thee in a secret place when storms are high. Get into thy closet, shut thy door, and quiet thyself as a weaned babe. But if thy voice is quiet to man, let it never cease to speak loudly and mightily for man. We need to be quiet to get the ear of Yah. Amid all the traffic of the ways, turmoils without and within, make in my heart a quiet place and come and dwell therein. A little shrine of quietness, all sacred to thyself, where thou shalt all my soul possess, and I may find myself. And then this quote from John Oxenham says, Pascal said one half of the ills of life come because men are unwilling to sit down quietly for 30 minutes to think through all the possible consequences of their acts. I just thought this was so good, so encouraging. And just, you know, that's just the heart of the Father to encourage and to showcase his love and his guidance to his children. And so I just wanted to share these verses are such a blessing to me, and I hope it's a blessing to you. I hope everyone's having a good night. Take care. Thanks. Bye.